It was sunny. We had just signed a great deal with an important customer. Everything was just going so smoothly that day. I didn't realize one simple ordinary thing could affect the entire company and risk losing another deal I was working so hard for. All right, John. Here's to this deal and many other deals ahead of us. May they never end. Just like our great coffee shop chats. Why did I have to open that email? It looked so real. It feels impossible to spot the bad ones these days. The attackers are getting really good. The attackers target Victor with a crafted email, appearing to come from a trusted source. The mail contains a link to a phishing website, which is an exact replica of Victor's own corporate webmail login. Thinking his webmail session is simply timed out, Victor logs in again, and the attacker harvests the corporate credentials. In addition, exploiting a vulnerability in a browser plugin, the attacker starts a command line in order to run PowerShell to load and execute a credential harvesting tool directly from memory, bypassing security mechanisms that rely on file I.O. to detect attacks. I went back to the office and logged onto the network. I wish I'd known that my laptop was already compromised. I wish I'd known that my login was just what they were waiting for. But hey, cut me some slack. It could have happened to any of us, right? Although the initial attack was not particularly selective, the attackers have been watching their command and control service for high-profile victims. Noticing the industry that this victim operates in, the attackers intervene directly. Using the harvested credentials, the attackers manually perform reconnaissance on the entire network and are able to get domain admin privileges. They go on to drop further backdoors to ensure persistence and move laterally throughout the network, establishing a route to the OT network. Continuing to live off the land, they create group policy objects to deploy obfuscated ransomware to every server and OT console in the environment, including the backup servers. They trigger the encryption simultaneously for maximum effect. OK, Sean, that's all I have for now. I'll keep you updated. And? How are we supposed to make sense out of this? There is so much noise coming from the sim. It's hard to find the needle in the haystack. We've got to get a handle on this. We are responsible for incident response, and more importantly, for finding the root cause. We need not only to know how this happened, but we have to make sure it can't happen again. I'm trying. There's just so much data. I have to cross-reference event data from at least five different management consoles. Endpoints, email, web, cloud, networks, firewalls, and more. And then look, here's an alert over in the email security system, which is great, but then I have to switch over here and dig around in the endpoint security logs to see if I can find related activity for that user. Then I need to go over to the sim and dig around looking to see what might have spread from the affected endpoints. And that's only finding out how far the attack went. Then we have to make sense of it all, construct a chronology, find patient zero, and then somehow work out a root cause analysis. This really is painful. The team's just not big enough to do this effectively. It's not just that it's hard for you to investigate these issues, it's making it hard for me to report confidently to the CIO and the board. With all the new compliance and disclosure regulations, we have to be able to get a clear assessment much quicker. There has to be a better way. 